Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we are going to use NFPA Link to do it. The easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today we've been asked to cover the important points of whole house generators. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is go to the link homepage, the main dashboard. We'll click the pin drop and that's our direct. And then we're gonna to go to equipment and then we're gonna scroll down until we find generator. Then we will click whole house generator with an automatic transfer switch, which is what we will be reviewing today. And it will be based on the 2020 NEC. The first thing that you'll see uh, number one here, and this is an automatic transfer switch. And if we click on that, you will see that the automatic transfer switch is defined in article 100 as a, a as an automatic or non-automatic device for transferring one or more load conductor connections from one power source to another. So that's what basically a transfer switch is. Um, in the 2020 code, this may also be uh, the emergency uh, disconnect for the uh, service, or it may not be, depending on how it is and where it's laid out. That's something to always be aware of. The second thing we're going to cover is the whole house generator itself. And the first thing you will see in section 445.6, it requires that the generator, stationary generators be listed. So it's stationary, not portable ones, but stationary. The next thing you will also see is in 445.10, generators need to be suitable for the location where they are going to be installed. For example, if they're installed in a wet location, they have to be rated for that. Or even more so, a hazardous location, if they were being used in that, they would need to be listed for that. The marking. Each generator over 15 kW is required to have a nameplate with the following, and that's each generator and it's rated more and that means stationary uh, generators or portable generators and they need to be marked with the manufacturer's name the rated frequency which is typically 60 hertz the number of phases if it's a if it's an ac generator so single phase or three phase rating in kw or kva so the kw kilowatts or kilovolt amperes needs to have the power factor what the normal volt volts and the corresponding amperes uh, to that rating amperes that correspond to it and then of course the rated ambient temperature that it is rated for the next thing that you're going to look at is opacity of conductors and we'll skip back and conductor and this is for the generator conductors this is what 44513a this applies to that not the feeder conductors from the generator to the transfer switch this often gets misinterpreted so what they're talking about in this section is the generator conductors are those that come from the electric motor output terminals to the breaker in the generator housing. So it's all contained. Those must be 115% of the nameplate current rating. Now most installers or inspectors will not deal with this as the conductors already are installed at the factory and it comes out designed as a listed assembly. We'll click back and we'll go to the over current protection. And it's pretty simple. Generators must have some form of over current protection in accordance with 445.12. 
and this lists different generator requirements whether they're constant bolt two wire what the voltage is balancers three wire dc so it just depends and that indicates the type of over current the next section we're going to jump into is the disconnect and emergency shutdown and that's covered in 445.18a and B and C and D. We're gonna go all through all of that. So 445.18a requires a, a disconnecting means that shuts down all ungrounded conductors simultaneously and meets the requirements in 110.25. This would be plausible because it could be depressed and the holes here indicate that it can have a lock through it. I'll scroll down and we'll actually click into 445.18. That's the beautiful thing about link. You can click that and look at the whole thing. So, section B requires an emergency shutdown for the prime mover. And the prime mover is the gas, typically the gasoline engine, might be natural gas or propane, but the actual combustion motor and it might even be a wind turbine that is actually spinning the electrical motor that produces the electricity that you have to be able to shut down now C talks about for generators over 15 kW there must be a remote emergency stop switch to stop the prime mover located outside of the equipment room or the generator enclosure and then you'll see in 18D, for permanently mounted generators at one and two family dwelling units, the emergency shutdown device is to be located outside at a readily accessible location, which means it has to be able to be quickly reached. We hope that answered a lot of your questions about the whole house generators. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link Give Link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, Link is truly a window to productivity.